So it's starting to record. There we go. So hello everybody, my name's Tony. I'm Rawlicious, rawliciousyou.com. In today's video, we have a special guest on Sid Barnes from England, but now currently living in Koh Lanta, Thailand. I'm currently in Phuket, so we're not far from each other, which I hope soon we see each other again. We first met in Bangkok and I'd heard about Sid before um, and it was great to to meet Sid uh, in Bangkok and then uh, a year or so on, we've become really good friends and it's really inspiring to hear about Sid's story and reading his book, which I highly recommend to get. I'll share all those details in the description below. Uh, his, yeah, his story is, is a phenomenal one. I'm gonna let Sid explain a little bit about <laughs> his story, where he's come from. We've got some questions. And if you do have any questions to ask, then do comment in the comment section below. And myself or Sid will get back to you uh, as soon as we can. So let's start the, the interview or just this chat. I wanna create these phenomenal interviews to inspire you to perhaps live a more or a high, you know, a high raw vegan lifestyle because it's so life changing. And uh, it's not even just about the weight loss. For most people, they lose their weight. Finally, they lose it but they gain so much more. They gain health, they gain clarity, mental focus, better skin, better hair quality, so much more than what I explain about on my channel. So Sid, uh, can you just share a little bit of your story, you know, a little bit more in towards like how your health started deteriorating, you know, why, why you think your health started to deteriorate? All right, yeah, hi. Hi, Tony. I'm uh, Sid from Manchester. Grew up on a council estate. Uh, my nickname's Psycho Sid. I'm not a nutter. I don't hurt people. I used to be a hippie many blue moons back and was nicknamed Psychedelic Sid. And that eventually became shortened and I've been known as Psycho Sid ever since. So, yeah. I've lived a magical life. I, I've always lived on the edge. I couldn't really conform. I, I didn't visualize a life of working in an office or a factory for the rest of my life. So I just took off and started traveling to tropical <laughs> jungles, mountains, islands, and loved it. And so I've lived semi off grid most of my life. Um, Things were, I'll take you to uh, January 2012. Life was fabulous. I'd married the woman of my dreams. We had a kid. And I bought a house, I bought a car. I was happy. I thought, this is it. I've made it forever. This is perfect. Perfect place, perfect partner. And in the blink of an eye, I lost everything. I was diagnosed with stage four inoperable terminal mouth cancer and given six months to live. I went back to the UK with my family <coughs> and was told. You all right there, Sid? Yeah, someone just phoned me then, so I've had to decline oh. it, whoever it's from. It's probably, uh, I don't know, some admirer. I doubt it. Uh, probably, <laughs> case, probably, anyway, so I, uh, I've analysed why I got cancer. Well, from uh, 16, I was a choking smoker. So I always smoked about 30 cigarettes a day. In the evening, a few pints of beer, pizza. I've, I've all, since five, I've always been vegan, more or less, uh, and strictly vegan now, of course. Uh, but, you know, I'd be eating bags of crisps, pizzas, baked beans on toast, chip butties, um, fried tofu, and all these kind of things. And 
I just lived there, and I did get a little bit overweight at one time. I think before the yeah, before I got the cancer, and within the blink of an eye, I've got cancer. Now, if you're thinking about weight loss, can't you can't beat cancer, man? I was 110 kilos. A few months later, I was 45 kilo skeleton feeding myself through a hole in a tube. So they sent me home to die. They gave me some chemo. It didn't work. It nearly killed me. They tried radiotherapy with, with bloody agony, and if I could go back, I wouldn't have had it, but I didn't know then what I know now. So I didn't know what to do. I was That was it. I loved my wife. I loved my kids. I didn't want to die. And so I researched so many online, what can I do, what can I do? Uh, I researched Dr. Moore's stuff. I watched some of his videos. Uh, about detoxification and many other things and studied about, okay, this is your digestive system. Uh, this is your liver. That's, this is, these are your kidneys for filtering. And learnt, taught myself so much that I adopted a total raw diet, raw vegan diet of probably 90% fruit, 10% like green leafy veg, beet roots, carrots, things like that. And, Took loads of, went to my local uh, herbalist, got herbs for my kidneys, my bowels, and everything. Uh, minerals, vitamins, and that's, and I did that for three years. And surprisingly, uh, I beat it. And I was, I was, uh, that was in 2012 when the nightmare happened. And uh, I beat it and was given, declared cancer free, much to everyone's astonishment in 2017 and my book i wrote a book about it and it's on it's on the shelves of many of the top uh, medical consultants in the uk so not bad eh so i'm still alive what yeah. else can i touch to so did you would you say because you changed big emphasis you changed your diet really um, helped or cleared the cancer. Would you say it's number one diet? Um, I can, obviously, I, I, it worked for me, and I personally believe that the ideal diet for a human being is fruit because we're frugivores. If we make comparisons between the digestive system, jaws, teeth, and the rest of it, we're, we're we're designed to eat fruit, and obviously, as mankind uh, migrated from from Africa, where it was hot and, and there were pl the plentiful fruit, fruit was plentiful to cool the climates, and they, then they started eating st starchy vegetables and killing animals. And the advent of fire, meaning they could cook the meat, made it easier to digest. But in my opinion, unfortunately, that uh, creates acidity and lots of mucus which ends up clogging up the lamp lymphatic system the lymphatic system is your sewer system and there's more lymphatic fluid than blood and if you don't clear out your lymphatic system then your cells will start to mutate and that is where disease comes from that's my belief you may not agree with me but i am an ape man i'm a proper northern monkey and i'm only going to eat fruit yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? Because a lot of, especially where we're from, uh, a lot of English, uh, I think this 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 lifestyle, this diet is so extreme. When to us, I mean, we've you know, even I've lived that lifestyle of, you know, I didn't, I wasn't vegan from being young. I mean, it's been a ten year journey for me. Um, but uh, to to see the shift over the years, but. You know, from from where I've come from, and the expected, you know, there's a lot. Even for me, looking back, I'd be saying this diet is extreme, but it just makes complete sense. And uh, science is even backing it up. You know, you put people on fruit, a detox, fast. If they've got serious chronic issues, then they are they're healing. They are healing. Um, I think it's a massive contributor, if not number one for healing disease raw foods fruits especially like you've shared so after you was um diagnosed then and you 
gosh, that's so, it's so frightening. You forget how, like, you know, did, did you go into a bit of a panic? Was there a panic state? After I was diagnosed? Yeah. Uh, and was, it was like a blur at first. It was very numb. And unfortunately, when bad things happen, they tend to come in threes. And uh, my mum died to join my dad on the other side. So I had no family. And then my wife, who had been with for eight years, suddenly said, uh, I don't love you. I'm having an affair. Hurry up and die. And left. I've oh. only got three months to live, man. Can you not wait? And uh, and I was left alone with two kids, four and 14. So I had to, not only did I have to, uh, get my skeletal, skeletal frame to to take them to school to cook meals, uh, clean and cook and whatever. Uh, I, I do the shopping to get some food in. I also had to fight for my life. So it was quite a scary time. I think the heartbreak and the discovery of my wife's betrayal hurt me more than the cancer, to be wow. honest with you. I couldn't believe it. Yeah. And that, I uh, think, like, like I, I just said... Have to... Sorry? All I was going to say, I didn't have time to focus on myself and feel sorry for myself because I had two kids who had no one else, so I had to just focus on their well-being and... Probably that inspired me even more, knowing they had no one to fight for my life. Yeah, they saved you as well. You know, they saved you from giving up. And that's why, I mean, we I shared before in our previous calls that some people come to this lifestyle through desperation or inspiration. Yours was desperation. It was either you let give up or you fight um or you you know I, I don't always like i don't resonate with that word fight but you made damn sure that you 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 worked on your health you knew deep down inside there was a calling to choose this diet choose this lifestyle to heal so you um ended up coming away from raw foods still vegan uh, but you was eating more cooked what brought you back to raw foods again? Because you've recently gone raw, haven't you, Sid? Yeah. Um, obviously, when I beat the cancer, I'd rather fall in a little bit cocktail. Wow, look at me, eh? So it was yeah. suddenly the local chippy, bag, bags of chips, uh, uh, and obviously ready meals. And obviously, as I've not eaten meat for decades, all this new... Uh, you know, there's vegan food everywhere now, so I'll try some of them vegan burgers or vegan fish. And, and ice so it was quite easy. Uh, I think it was returning to the tropics about a year ago, actually. I returned to the tropics after eight years in rainy England. So it started raining now, I'm under a palm tree, and uh, <laughs> here in Paris, it's pissing down. And it gets any heavier. Oh, so a bit like Manchester after all. And I, I got here and I thought, right, I'm here. There's plentiful an abundance of tropical fruit. Right, I'm, if you keep there, I'm going to walk. All right. Okay, yeah. Yeah, so... Because it's uh, flat now. <laughs> <laughs> so everyone that's listening, more. Sid's... Um, uh, like you see... Oh wow, well, yeah, we're in we're in rainy season right now, but you um you seem to be getting quite a lot of rain. Mind you, we have. How cute what? is your bungalow? I love it. My bungalow. Yeah, it's right. nice. This. <laughs> yeah, it's right. much easier to I would say a high rise is much easier in the tropics. It is doable in um you know, in England, in Europe, uh, I was raw till four for many years. Had a, had one cooked meal a day and eating predominantly raw uh, fruits. Um, and then I just knew the ultimate goal was to be even higher, um, less cooked foods. I didn't think I ever be, would be fully raw um, until you start to see so many benefits. And, you know, you can feel good and even better on raw it just made sense 
So for you, so, so yeah, so you find it much easier in the tropics. Would you would you have considered fully raw if you were still back in England in the colder climates? Possibly because I'm a bit of a I get I get you know when I do something I'm full on and I thought well you know uh, that's it I'll just I'd, I'd do it but it's much easier here because a the fruits are a lot cheaper and it's very fresh and today I've just got some mangoes bananas dragon fruit uh, papaya uh, so yeah and um, that's great. So I'm happy here. And obviously you've got the sunshine most of the time, but it's just the end of the rainy season. So it's much easier here. I've uh, been on this raw diet now here for, I think today's day 46. And yeah. I've had a few crises, crises where I've had a pain in my leg, showing my weak spots, a bit snotty a couple of days. But it's all right. I'm doing it. And I've lost uh, four and a half kilos in that time which is like about, I think, about £10. I, yeah. and I, I'd never me if I want something, I'll have, OK, I'll have a papaya, a big papaya, eat it all or something. So it's, it's not as difficult as, it, as I imagined it would be. And it's yeah. nice to lose a bit of weight and see the belly going. I'm like, uh, you know, I'm a lot thinner now, look, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Where, so, um, so with the... You didn't want to lose weight. Obviously, it's nice to lose a little extra. And eventually, once your absorption has, uh, you have better absorption, you, you tend not to lose. Because people, this is what people are concerned about when they go on to raw. They'll lose too much weight. I mean, some people come in for the raw foods to lose weight. And then some are concerned they lose too much weight. That was one of my concerns. But what I found is your body starts to adapt. You start to absorb better. Because at first, you're just not absorbing anything. Uh, or absorbing as much as you think because most of us we have malabsorption issues um but once you've had that healed the digestive issues healed you 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 know you don't even have to eat as much as you initially did and uh, because you're taking in everything that you need uh so this is this is another reason why i love it how are you how are you feeling minus i know you said you had some detox symptoms and if you're feeling some pains here and there, you that's my the dog sleeping. <laughs> um she's sleeping in her, she's crying in her sleep. Uh you you feel like when when you go through some detox, this is things that come up if you've got some aches and pains that you never really knew about when you start to get them on your detox, then that is part of the healing journey. Um I'm gonna have to stop there for me. <laughs> uh, so what would you say is the benefits now uh, that you're experiencing apart from you said the weight loss uh, what what are you feeling right now I feel much more active and I feel more vibrant and uh, you know when I, when I I'm not just buying a packet of crisps vegan crisps or you know bread I, I just go go and get lots of fruit, but I feel I feel much more energy uh, uh, that people tend to think. Oh, if you're just eating fruit, you're going to be weak. It's actually the opposite. I feel a lot stronger, uh, and I feel much more positive about it because I know I'm doing something very very beneficial for my health, and also the mindset. It it. it it, it seems to be vibrating with more energy and power rather than walking around sluggish. And, yeah. and obviously the weight loss, when your clothes suddenly start fitting you better and you're looking better, uh, you know, you, I was starting to get postman pat, so it's a good thing I did it. Anyway, not much, because there's not a lot on me, but I could see a bit of a belly coming in. So it's yeah. probably the right for that reason. But health-wise, you actually, it's always a good feeling you know you're doing something beneficial and yes you have the little devil occasionally saying go on just one day go and get yourself go and get yourself uh, some cooked food and even if you did if you took it up and you did mm -hmm. well don't meet your up. say okay i did that uh but i'll carry on but meet, uh, raw tomorrow it's you know you don't have to you don't have to hurt yourself it's all for your own benefit yeah yeah, it's one of those, I think, people are, if they're in the mindset of all or nothing, 
And if they slip up, they think, oh, that's the rest of the day done or the rest of the week done. And then they go back into old patterns. But patterns and rewiring the mindset, the programs that we have is about the little changes. Actually, sometimes having stuff that we don't, you know, we've said we don't want anymore in our body, we may decide to consume. Like, say, if you if you go for a cooked food, a slice slice of pizza or something or potatoes or veg uh vegan of course all of it vegan um you uh just think well you know what that didn't make me feel good if you've got this awareness you it makes you not feel good and then you actually reflect and think actually it reinforces for some people it can go down a slippery slope but if you've got this awareness and actually connection you start to feel actually this is not worth it I want to feel like I did on the raw but this is a journey and I'm not going to beat myself up if I do consume uh you know some cooked food here and there it's just about the journey and knowing that your what your intentions are long term so you may have slip ups I mean there ha has been times in the past I had but I, I mean sometimes I don't beat myself up if I do and I just reflect and think actually it's just not even worth it because of how it makes you feel because you start like you said you realize how sluggish you are and numb you become and it's yeah it's uh not not as great so in summary then I'd like to end um this call so if you could share some tips perhaps three tips for someone that is considering going raw or even got cancer what would the tips be what would you share if someone i think for you it's more if someone has, has been diagnosed with cancer or a you know a debilitating disease or something yeah. that you know they're they're starting to look at alternatives what would be your three takeaways your tips what would be my what sorry your three tips for some yeah, tips or takeaways. Um, if to it, get started. I, I, as I uh, defeated terminal cancer, I obviously get messages often about this. I cannot tell people what to do because I'm not, I, yeah, I, I, I'm not a medical doctor, although I did study hundreds and hundreds of hours about nutrition to save my life. I think one of the most important <coughs> tips I would give is it's not what you eat, it's what you stop eating. You cut out, I would say the first thing you've got to do, cut out for all the processed food. No ready meals, nothing cooked. That would that would be my first. And, and obviously when you cut all that out, it would mean having lots and lots of a fruit, a few leafy vegetables, carrots maybe, and start putting actual healing living foods in your system, which is alkalizing your body rather than the acidic, because acids are toxic rather than putting acidic things. You know, think I've seen people <coughs> they've got cancer, they're drinking Coca Cola and eating absolute yeah. garbage, but they're not doing themselves any favors. Um, what else? So that would be one. Uh, two, try to join local groups of people who uh, learn as much as you can about alternative healing. Uh, would be um, uh, what kind of herb, herbal remedies there are, and learn about it. Make your own decision. Three, obviously there are books you can get. Doctor Morse's detox books are very good one there's a guy called Keith Mann who uh, has got a book I cured cancer at home and he was an animal activist a vegan who got uh, terminal leukemia which is an extremely step good step-by-step -step book uh, for inspiration you could buy my, my book it'll give you a bit of a laugh and a giggle I suppose mm -hmm. yeah. um, and just get support look into every method don't give up if you say <laughs> because your body is capable of healing itself, in yeah. my opinion. Yeah. That's my opinion. Yeah, definitely. I definitely agree. Well, thank you for that, Sid. So, um, thank you so much. I hope you all the best. I'm sure we'll keep.
continue to connect. Uh, but thank you for sharing your story and your advice and you know your suggestions, your recommendations. Really grateful for that. So if anyone has any questions or you want to see Sid's work or what he's doing, his book, I'll have all that information in the description box below. So thank you, Sid. I'll see you soon. Bye bye, Tony. Take care, love. Bye bye. So, uh, Sid.